thanks for joining me. Well, we begin with Israel's controversial annexation plans with Jordan continuing to voice its strong opposition, calling it unacceptable. King Abdullah II pressing the US Congress to step in, telling senators that the establishment of a Palestinian state is of high importance to Jordan. Now, the king also speaking with Abu Dhabi's Crown Prince Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed, who's come out to say that he assured Abdallah of the UAE's categorical rejection of the annexation plan, tweeting, we're working with our Arab brethren and the international community against this illegal move. Now, the annexation move is set to begin on July 1st with the Trump administration's so-called peace plan, stating that Israel can annex up to 30% of the West Bank. And for more on this story, let's bring in our Middle East correspondent, Emily Rose, who joins me here in studio. Emily, thank you for joining me once again. Uh, we're really hearing differing things here from the UAE. Uh, just yesterday, uh, we heard its Minister of Foreign Affairs coming out to say it wants to uh, have more normalised ties, let's say, with Israel. But now we're hearing uh, the Crown Prince slamming this annexation. Uh, what's going on here? Yes, it seems as though there's a conflicting uh, sort of message, not even from just internally within the UAE, but also if we look at the broad Gulf. On the one hand, over the past few years, we've seen these Gulf states try to get closer to Israel, even if it's covertly, uh, even ties that are lucrative and commerce, uh, the like, without having open diplomatic ties. But on the other hand, they have to take an outward stance against Israel's policies if it does go through with plans to annex parts of the West Bank. So it looks as though right now the UAE and Jordan are both trying to lobby the United States to get to put pressure on Israel to back away from annexation. And it seems as though they're in lockstep in that regard. They're both aligning with that policy. Uh, but we can see that they're really trying to target that annexation move without taking a blanket statement about putting sanctions, let's say, on Israel as a whole or the United States uh, if it does support that move to go through that. Mm -hmm. And Emily, I understand uh, you've been speaking to people in the West Bank, uh, a lot of anger, of course, uh, there regarding this. Yes, yeah, Sarah, last night I was in the Palestinian city of Ramallah and I had a chance to sit down with Dr. Nabil Shah. He's a senior advisor to Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas about international affairs. There was a report in Hebrew media where he stated that that the uh, Palestinians will not be obligated to stay within the rules of engagement if Israel does go through with annexation and that there might be another intifada on the horizon. So I asked him to clarify that statement. Let's listen to what he told me. Well, the talk about intifada today is strictly nonviolent. And that is part of why the intifada, the people who want to go to the ground should be explained and should be told what is it that we want and what is it that we don't want. We don't want the intifada to become violent. And therefore, any civil popular... And uh, Emily, I understand our Defence Minister Benny Gantz wants to appoint someone from the IDF to oversee this annexation plan, but so far, no takers. Well, we looked at when we look at reports in Hebrew media, it's true there were top line officials, military officials, former military officials who he tried to pass that torch to and they turned him down. Now, one of the reasons, according to the report, is that they worked extensively in the West Bank during their military service and they said they saw it as a conflict of interest. But if we look at other reports, reports as well that came out yesterday in Hebrew media, it looks as though Benny Gantz isn't seeing in terms of this annexation move, apparently he was prevented. He was presented with four different scenarios for what that annexation would look like, varying from annexing 30% of the West Bank to just a small symbolic piece. And he didn't see much favor, even in the top officials from his party, for any of those plans. So even if he goes back to his party to try to garner that support, it looks as though, at least according to these reports, he might not be able to get it. All right, Emily Rose, thank you for the update. We'll continue uh, to speak about this throughout the day. And our host of Strictly Security, Yoav Limor, spoke to former assistant to President Trump and special representative for international negotiations, Jason Greenblatt, regarding Israel's move for annexation. Let's take a listen. What I think would what Israel is considering doing is consistent with the plan that we released. It's consistent with the idea that this area should not remain in limbo forever 
just because the Palestinian leadership in Ramallah and the so-called leadership in Gaza, the terrorist thugs that, that are Iran funded, are unable or unwilling to negotiate under any circumstance. It wasn't just our peace plan that they rejected. So I think that if Israel were to move forward and embrace the plan, which would include application of Israeli sovereignty over these areas, it is something that I personally believe in. And that's why I wrote what I did together with our ambassador, David Friedman and Jared Kushner and so many others in the US government. But Israel has to take into account multiple issues, including the very question you're asking, which is while the UAE was at the release of the plan, and they should be commended for that as well, if there's a chance that the UAE ambassador's words are correct and that the relationship will be spoiled permanently, temporarily, it remains to be seen, they have to weigh that along with everything else they're weighing in connection with this step.